de luna en el cielo ausencia de luz en el mar muy solo con mi desconsuelo mirando la noche me puse a llorar pensaba que ya no me amabas con la desesperación que siempre eclipsaba la luz de tu amor eclipse de luna en el cielo ausencia de luz en el mar muy solo con mi desconsuelo mirando la noche me puse a llorar Eclipse de amor en tus labios que ya no me quieren besar. Quisiera olvidar sus agravios y luego soñar. Eclipse de luna en el cielo ausencia de luz en el mar muy solo con mi desconsuelo mirando la noche me puse a llorar pensaba que ya no me amabas con la desesperación que siempre eclipsaba la luz de tu amor eclipse de luna en el cielo ausencia de luz en el mar muy solo con mi desconsuelo 
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fabulous Feinstein's 54 Below. Before we get started this evening, just a polite reminder, please take this moment to silence your cell phones. Also, there is no flash photography. Thank you. I caught myself smiling today. I'm as shocked as you, but for a moment, I... Anyway. I was standing in a parking lot in a sea of cars as wind blew in from the mountain top, and a mist began to settle and blot the yellow lights that cast shadows of my thinly coated frame. I caught myself smiling today. A memory smile, the kind that creeps in unexpectedly and throws you from your timid feet and wishes you could let it be. But there it was, and there I was, like some ragdoll fool, cheek to cheek. Strange thing it is, a smile, to assume such happiness when the muscles in my face couldn't tell the difference between what is fear and what is grace. A smile doesn't care who wins the race, just that we ran, however many miles it may be. A smile remembers, remembers the way your hair changed colors in the sun, the way your hands combed through mine like silken rum, remembers the look you gave from across the room like a secret song only we knew. A smile remembers you. It seems so long ago. Like a faraway dream where you know it was real, but it fades. And it fades. Fades into vapors that scatter to waves. So. I caught myself smiling today. I know, it's strange, but it's true that for a moment, I, I thought of you. For a moment, I thought of you and my memory, not knowing what to do, was left with a grin, a soft tilt of the lip, a slight tightening of the chin. Yet beneath this war-torn gash, this sober meeting of toothful gnash, is every moment I've tried to forget. Every hour in loving you I spent, every memory twisted and bent by storms that mangle the smiles we let slip from the sides of our lips. Smiles that remember no matter the truth, smiles that live in the heart of youth, a way back to then, a reason for here, a small piece of something that's lost in the when. A smile remembers and has no end. A smile remembers and hopefully mends whatever the smile once tried to forget. So I caught myself smiling today. <laughs> what more can I say? Perhaps I'll smile again. Someday.
Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by if you smile through your pain and sorrow. Smile, and maybe tomorrow you'll see the sun come shining through. For you, hide up your face with gladness. Hide every trace of sadness. Although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile. What's the use in crying? Find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow. You'll see the sun come shining through for you. Light up your face with gladness. Hide every trace of sadness. Although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile. What's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can feel you smiling behind your masks. Welcome. Thank you all so much for being here. It's so freaking fantastic to be on stage with a live audience. Thank you all for doing your part and getting vaccinated so we can gather and, and hear music and, and share stories and commune like human beings once again. Um, it's been a long time, and, and I'm very grateful for the room, uh, to the owners of the room to have me here. Um, just a, a quick note, um, they are filming the, uh, the concert this evening. I, I'm not sure if you were aware of that, but I think it's so fantastic, and uh, I'm grateful to them for that. So be very, very good. <laughs> My mom will be watching you at some point in the near future. <laughs> um, so I've called this evening uh, Reflections because I think we all have been doing some reflecting over the last 17 or so months. Um, my reflecting period has gone back a, a little bit farther for the last six and a half years, and I'll, uh, I'll get to that in, in a moment. But um, that, that poem was written by my friend Matthew Meckes, and um, he also composed the music, he edited the video, he did the whole damn thing himself. He, he presented me with three different poems from which to choose to record um, a series of poems of his that he's doing the same treatment to. And that poem just really hit me hard. Hit me right here between the eyes and in the solar plexus. It spoke to me in the moment that I was, just a, a, a month and a half ago I recorded that when I was putting this show together. And um, it, it, it spoke to me in a way that um, I think you'll, you'll understand my reflections uh, being inspired by that. Um, to go back a little bit farther than the six and a half years that I mentioned to uh, June 26, 
1996. I was doing a play in the East River Park at, an amp at the amphitheater there, uh, directed by Tina Landau. And um, that day specifically, June 26th, I told Marin Maisie that I loved her and that I wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. And uh, little did we know that even though we moved swiftly into that union, that we only had 22 years uh, left. And we made the most of it. And we had a great life together. Um, fast forward to May 6, 2015. Uh, Marin was diagnosed with late stage ovarian cancer. And by September 13th, 2018, she had transitioned. There's a film that plays inside my head Full of things we did and words we said We were both so young, didn't have a dime All we had was plenty of time But the world was sweet Life was fine And the nights were warm as apple wine And we shared a bed that was made for two Where at night I tell all my dreams to you And you promised they would come true In time I would depend on your warming touch There was no end to your willing heart And what I asked you would always do Even when I knew What I asked might drive us apart In time Now that leaves me here So far away Thinking how the two of us went astray Still I close my eyes And the movie plays That remembers us in our prime And I get to view Time when all that we had was Young and foolish Why is it wrong to be Young and foolish We haven't long to be Soon enough The carefree days The sunlit days go by Soon enough, the bluebird has to fly. We were foolish. One day we fell in love. Now we wonder what we were dreaming of. Smiling in the sunlight. Laughing in the rain I wish that we were 
were young and foolish again. We were foolish. One day we fell in love. What we were dreaming of Smiling in the sunlight Laughing in the rain I wish That we Were young And foolish Again. I just have to point out that the previous song, Time, was written by our very own Joseph Thalken and Barry Kleinborg. So when Marin passed away, um, I was only about three months into a year-long contract uh, with, uh, on Broadway in Pretty Woman, the musical. Fortunately, I didn't have much to do in that show. You wouldn't have heard me say that at the time. Some of you may have heard me say that at the time. Um, but I was, I was a misogynistic asshole attorney um, in a rom-com musical. I just floated on, said some very... Um, awful things and then went back to my dressing room and hung out uh, and I was really good at that uh, and one of the uh, one afternoon I was uh, talking to my sister Corey who is a professor professor of acting at Northern Kentucky University and she said um, Jace I'm going to India to become certified yoga instructor and um, the next two weeks after that four week intensive is a two week meditation intensive do you want to go to India and meditate? And I didn't hesitate and said yes. I didn't know why. Um, it had been on my mind for some time on and off, but so I just jumped. Uh, we went to Dharmashala in the Himalayas where um, the Dalai Lama lives and uh, had a wonderful experience meditating and learning about that. And I decided to extend that trip and take a spiritual pilgrimage across India, like you do. Um, <laughs> So I did it right. I got a, a, a tour guide, a personal guide, who was a, um, a Buddhist and Hindu scholar. And I wanted to hit all the spots I could in the area that I was in. And went to um, Bodh Gaya, where the Buddha was enlightened, and we're in Varanasi, where he started his teaching. And I just wanted to learn as much as I could about Buddhism, Hinduism. I wasn't going to, you know, convert. Um, but I, I was looking for something. I didn't know what. Um, I was raised Southern Baptist. My father was a minister. I wasn't having any of that. Uh, let's see what they've got. Um, and just looking for all the answers to any of the questions. And it was wonderful. And I came back to the States and promptly was diagnosed with viral meningitis. Um, so I don't know where I got it. Could have been India. Could have been Heathrow. Could have been on an airplane airplane it could have been here in the city um so i went to visit my doctor and he said um you have meningitis but it could be bacterial which is deadly um and normally even though i think you're okay i'm just, i would just send you home um and, and wait it out and see how it goes but there's nobody at home to to keep an eye on you and i was like <laughs> Uh, he was. He said it in a much nicer and you know much more sympathetic way. But that's how I heard it. Um, so he sent me to the emergency room at New York Presbyterian. And as I was laying there, um, half naked, with a uh, house hospital gown on and uh, in a fetal position on a gurney, uh, waiting my spinal tap to con uh, confirm the diagnosis, I said, "God damn it." Well, it can't get any worse than this. 
So uh, fast forward to uh, October, November of 2019, I decided to take a spiritual pilgrimage of the United States. So I got in my car, put my motorcycle on a trailer behind it, towed it from New York to California and back, visited friends, family, scattered Marin's ashes in the Grand Canyon, in Big Sur, Yosemite. I was doing it. I was just seeking those answers to whatever questions here. Just give me something. And um, got back and I said, all right, January 1st, 2020. I'm gonna hit the ground running. <laughs> Book solid throughout 2020. This is gonna be a great year. We all know what happened. Um, I'm no special you know, case uh, than anyone else, but um, you know, it really sucks to be grieving and to be isolated, right? F in hell. <laughs> So, um, uh, but long story short, I avoided getting COVID-19 until January 3rd, 2021. <laughs> and um, as I sat on my couch at the house, uh, upstate New York, I thought, God damn it. <laughs> I, can I even think? that it can't get any worse than this. <laughs> Who can I turn to when nobody needs me? My heart wants to know and so I must go where destiny leads me. With no star to guide me and no one beside me, I'll go on my way and after the day, the darkness will hide me. Then maybe tomorrow I'll find what I'm after, I'll throw off my sorrow. Beg, steal, or borrow my share of laughter. With you, I could learn to. With you, on a new day. But who can I turn to if you turn? After the day, the darkness will hide me, and maybe tomorrow I'll find what I'm after. I'll throw off my sorrow, make steel or borrow my share of laughter. Did I mention that my dog Oscar died six months after Marin did? No, I didn't, because this show was way too heavy up front. I saved it to right now, the perfect moment. He did, but um, I'm not going to go into that. He really hung it out six months, and he was there, and he was a very good boy, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but after I started to recover from COVID-19 uh, late in January, 
I decided to explore a couple apps that I had downloaded on my phone. Um, one was Pet Finder and one was Hinge. <laughs> I see you are familiar. One is a hookup app for uh, adoptable pets and the other one is just a hookup app. <laughs> no, it's a dating app, specifically. And um, I, I have to say that I was, I'm so happy to say that on uh, February 4th, I met a beautiful blonde schnorky. That's a schnauzer Yorkie mix. <laughs> Not an exotic woman from Schnorksylvania. <laughs> dad jokes! <laughs> Not even a dad. Just a guy with bad jokes. <laughs> King is his name, and I've given him the, na the full name, the Sun King, after the Beatles song. Uh, here comes the Sun King. Everybody's happy, everybody's laughing. It's not a very profound um, uh, lyric of Lennon McCartney, but it really struck uh, a perfect um, note with him. Um, he's, he's great. Uh, but when I got him, he had a cold, according to the shelter. According to my vet, he had the worst pneumonia he had ever seen. <laughs> he had an intestinal parasite, a tick-borne disease, conjunctivitis, and pancreatitis. So as I brought him home and we sat on the couch he would look at me and I'd cough and he I'm certain he thought please don't die <laughs> and I'd look at him and he'd cough and I'd say please don't die um, we looked into each other's eyes and paw in hand we knew that we had found our new best friend soon the lonely nights will be ended soon. Two hearts as one will be blended. I found the happiness I've waited for. The perfect pup that I was fated for. Soon our little cottage will find a safe with all our cares far behind us The day or mine this world will be in tune Let's make that day come soon Come soon, come soon, come soon, come soon My dog, you'll never be lonely soon You'll find I live for you only Come soon. Good dog. <laughs> the best one I ever had. Um, so I mentioned that June 26, 1996, East River Park Amphitheater, Tina Landau directing was a significant moment in my life. So fast forward to June 26, 2021, on the other side of Manhattan, another amphitheater, the new Little Island Amphitheater. And uh, Tina Landa was directing again, uh, this time a concert. And she was calling it BYOB, Bring Your Own Beautiful. And she wanted us to select a song that we thought was beautiful. And so I chose this next song, which is a Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein song from a musical they wrote called Very Warm for May. Um, and that evening, as I um, was addressing the audience, I told them the significance of June 26 um, in 96 and, and then, and I said that on September 13th, 2018, beauty 
went out of my life. But I was very happy to say that recently, beauty had come back into my life in the form of a beautiful and talented, intelligent Brazilian woman named Andrea Nunes, who was there not, that night, who is here tonight, and I hope will be around for many, many nights to come. <laughs> we met in May, and I think uh, Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein hit the nail on the head because it was the hottest May I have experienced in a very, very long time. <laughs> Time and again, I've longed for adventure Something to make my heart beat the faster What did I long for? I never really knew Finding your love, I found my adventure Touching your hand, my heart beat the faster All that I want in all of this world is you. You are the promised kiss of springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You are this hush of evening that trembles on the brink of a lovely song. You are the angel glow that lights a star. The dearest things I know are what you are. Someday Happy arms will hold you, and someday I'll know that moment divine when all the things you were are mine. Are you out there? Oh, there you are. <laughs> like the beat, beat, beat of the tom tom when the jungle shadows fall. Like the tick, tick, tock of the stately clock as it stands against the wall. Like the drip, drip, drip of the raindrops when the summer showers through. So a voice within me keeps repeating you, 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 night and day. You are the one, only you beneath the moon and under the sun. Whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are, I think of you night and day, day and night. Why is it so that this longing for you follows wherever I go? 
In the roaring traffic's boom In the silence of my lonely room I think of you night and day Spend my life making love to you day and night, night and day. Whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are. I Night and day, under the hide of me, there's no such a hungry yearning burning inside of me, and this torment won't be through till you let me spend my life making love to you, day. She's attempting to teach me Portuguese, which is not working out very well. <laughs> she also speaks Spanish, English, French. I'm just good to speak English. <laughs> um, anyway, I, um, you've all heard the phrase, um, closing a chapter in your life and, and rewriting or starting a new chapter. And I was uh, talking to my friend Eric Anderson, who uh, I starred with in uh, Pretty Woman the Musical, and he said, man, you're not just closing a chapter and opening a new chapter. You're closing a whole book, and you're starting a new chapter in a new book. And I like that, not because he's really cool, but because I... <laughs> I get what he said, and, and, I, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Um, and I've been thinking of my life in a, a bit of a trilogy of sorts. Um, the first book of the trilogy was Birth to 25, second book, 25 to 50. I just turned 50 on July 13th. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, and then this new book, the beginning chapter, and... Um, the one thing that's common in all the, the books is the, are the songs, the music. And uh, sometimes um, the song, like this next one, have played a part in the previous books, but have now changed just ever so slightly. It's not the pale moon that excites me that thrills and delights me Oh no It's just the nearness of you It isn't your sweet conversation that brings this sensation Oh no It's just the nearness of you When you're in my arms And I feel you so close
soft lights to enchant me if you only grant me the right to hold you ever so tight and to feel in the night the nearness of you When you're in my arms And I feel you so close to me All my world as dreams come true I need no soft light to enchant me if you'll only grant me the right to hold you ever so tight and to feel in the night the nearness of you nearness of you of you Joseph Dawkin This next song, I've never performed in concert uh, before, but I've sung it a hell of a lot. It was one of my go-to audition songs when I moved to the city in 1991, and it, it uh, served me very well. Um, got a lot of gigs out of this song, um, but the most important gig that I got was a musical called Floyd Collins, written by Adam Gettle and Tina Landau. <laughs> And um, it introduced me to the theater community at large in a, in a very significant way. And um, I've been reflecting about that, too. Just last night, it came to me uh, thinking about the theater community, and not just the theater community uh, as actors and, and stage managers and writers and composers and directors and the people behind the scenes that put on the show. But you are our theater community as well. And I am so grateful for your support, not just for me, but for theater and live performance. Thank you so much for continuing to support live, live performance. I think we've all realized that with the absence of live performance, and uh, you know, we all did our damnedest to bring something through a Zoom call or on Seth Rudetsky's show, but it's just not the same as being here in the room and being close to one another. So again, thank you for, for, for supporting and, and being here. Um, so the song, um, like I said, I haven't sung in a long time, but it was, when I was putting the show together, it seemed to be screaming from the three ring binder <laughs> with dust on it in the corner of the room. Um, and it fits so right in where I am right now and with whom I am here fitted with, see, English. Um, <laughs> But um, the imagery, the beautiful imagery, and the, the time and the significance. She looked into a heart so sad And saw what no one ever had 
Beneath the snow she saw the spring She finds good in everything Give her thorns and she'll find the roses Give her sand and she'll find the sea Give her rain and she'll find the rainbows Just see the love she found in me Just see the love she found in me She looks into each tear that's cried And somehow sees the sunny side And even on the darkest night She knows where to find the light Give her thorns and she'll find the roses Give her sand and she'll Just see the love she found in me When the world starts closing in She gives me strength to smile again Give her thorns and she'll find the roses Give her sand and she'll find the sea Give her rain and she'll find the rainbows Just see the love she found in me Just see the love she found in me of you, add a dash of starlight and a dozen roses too, then let it rise for a hundred years or two, and that's the recipe for making love. It doesn't need sugar, cause it's already sweet, it doesn't need an oven, cause it's got a lot of heat, just add a dash of kisses to make it all complete, and that's the recipe for making love. And if you made it right, you know it, it's not like anything you've made before. And if you made it wrong, you know it Cause the monk keep you coming back for more I didn't get it from my grandma's book upon a shelf I didn't get it from a magical and culinary elf No, a little birdie told me that you can't make it by yourself And that's the recipe for making love Joe. anything you've made before and if you made it wrong you know it cause it won't keep you coming back for more no i didn't get it from my grandma's book upon a shelf i didn't get it from a magical and culinary elf no a little birdie told me that you can make it by yourself and that's the recipe and that's the recipe for making love to you that's the recipe for making love now that's really cooking with Yes. Joe! Oh. Oh. Well, um, we're on a bit of a tight time schedule these days here at Pitch 4 Below. We need to get the hell out so they can clean this place up of your dirty, dirty germs um, and get ready for Adam Pascal's show. But I want to thank you all once again for coming out tonight and supporting live performance. 
Thank you. I want to thank I want to thank everybody here at 54 Below, the owners, um, Jennifer Ashley Tepper, for asking me to come back and being so supportive and giving me uh, a real artistic home. I feel like um, it's not just a cabaret space. You've all witnessed something maybe a little bit different than you might have expected, and I hope you've enjoyed it um, and it might have touched your heart. But I thank you. Um, I want to thank the, the wonderful chef and the kitchen staff. I want to thank the bar staff for getting you liquored up. I want to thank the, the wait staff for being cocktail ninjas and being so creepily quiet and bringing your, your bills, I imagine, at this point. But thank you all for your incredible attention um, to detail and making this a wonderful full experience here. Um, so in this trilogy of books, there have been many, many characters through, throughout the first book, the second book, and into the beginning of this new, uh, the new beginning of this third book. And um, some characters have continued on, and um, some have not. Um, one character that just will not let go is my music director, pianist, and very, very good friend is Joseph Thalken. Please never leave. I don't pretend to have any magical recipes or answers. Um, I've been through a few things, and I've learned to just, if you can, calmly wait uh, through the dark storm that you might be experiencing and keeping your eye out for light, whatever that is, an open door, an open window, a crack in a wall. And if it's open wide enough, walk towards it, walk through it looking for this positivity in a very difficult life. Life is difficult. Um, but if we do hold on to that, uh, not right, what's the, the middle way, right? The Buddhists believe in the middle way, not to get too high with the highs and not too low with the lows, um, but to keep your, your pace and, and um, trying to keep your heart clear and open and looking for the light. Um, I'm nowhere near the end of my journeys in my life. Uh, but at 50, I'm glad to, to have an opportunity to uh, write this new chapter in the book of Jason. And I'm grateful for my friends and family, for all of you, and for the new main characters in this book, uh, King and Andrea. storm. Hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind. Walk on.
Thank you. Suddenly I'm upon top of the world It should have been somebody else Just like the light of a new day Hit me from out of the blue Breaking me out of the spell I was in Making all of my wishes come true me This is too good to be true Look at me Falling for you Believe it or not I'm walking on air I never thought I could feel so free me It's just me, it's just me. Thank you, good night. Silence that surrounds us 